there's probably two questions that everybody asks when they get into personal development, entrepreneurship, and self-development. The first one is, why is it that other people can do those things and, and I haven't yet been able to do that? And then most people ask the question next, which is, how can I do that? And then uh, the third question that all high achievers ask is, if I can do that, how can I do it faster? Then how can I do it fast? That's pretty much it. So that is what we're going to talk about today. We're also going to talk about how to double your income in half the time and how to do it without the stress, the pressure that you we feel like we're under in today's society. We have so many inputs coming at us. How do we eliminate 80% of those inputs and just really get focused on not just the bottom 20% or the most, the highest 20%, but how do we get more focused on the 20% of the 20%? Now, today, and so today we're going to talk about how do you take your vision, your dreams, or whatever, wherever you're currently at, and how do we apply it so that you're able to have success with that at, at light speed? Now, one of the things that I have on my, my board here is this is Brian Tracy. You may or may not know Brian, but if you go on my YouTube show at Ed O'Keefe Show, he is the video that I posted. This is a live event of a seminar that I did like 15 years ago, I can't even believe I'm that, that mature. <laughs> I don't know if I'm that mature, but what Brian did is he, I hired him as a consultant multiple times. I hired him $25,000 to come out. And then I liked him so much. And I had already been buying all his packages and products. But Brian was such a great guy that I was like, Hey, Brian, can you come in and train my team and my business, my company? And so that was another 20 grand. And then I flew out and spent the day with him. I would say for that glimpse of time, I was probably one of his top clients. And the reason is because what I like to talk about over and over again in my book, Time Collapsing, which we'll talk about in just a moment, is, is that proximity is power. If I have a goal and I have an ability to actually get in front of somebody that's already done what I want to do. It's one of the first master keys of shrinking time frames. Okay. And Brian was such a master at it. Um, in fact, uh, I never threw this idea by him, but as I think about it, he would have been the perfect person to partner with a book about the topic of time collapse. Let me move this over just slightly. And so here we are today, we're going to talk about this book and I'll tell you why I, I, I wrote it and why I teach on this concept. If you don't know me or you do know me, one of the, my backstory is I family of 13 kids, grew up in a family of 13 kids. I'm the 12th of 13. And we grew up on the South side of Chicago. My wife and I still live here with our seven kids. It's a little warm in here with the fire on. So I'm gonna take this off. But the, the thing that was very, uh, was in our household was, you're going to go to school, you're going to get by, you're going to be nice to kids, and then you're going to go get a union job. And the reason that was, because back in the day, that was like your pathway to security and in some ways just stability. So you always have insurance, you always have a pension, and you always have a job, right? Because the union would take care of you. Now, in some ways, the blue, the blue collar market's coming back uh, with a storm, uh, like a storm, because AI is disrupting a lot of the mid-level jobs of kids coming out of college. But when I was going through my years, I never wanted to do that. Okay. I never wanted to do that. I wasn't, I was never good with my hands. I, I always felt like I got bored very quickly. And then I was fortunate enough to go away to school. And I was the first out of 13 kids to get a scholarship. No, that's not true. My oldest sister got a scholarship to play, but I was the first to go away and actually graduate. She's a few credit shorts, but she did just fine. And the, the whole idea was I got, I went to school and I still remember the day that my life changed. I looked across the, the desk. My coach was sitting right here. And I looked at the across behind my coach and I saw an audio tape series that said psychology of winning right behind coach. And I said, hey, coach, can I borrow those audio tapes? And he's, he said, sure, just bring them back. And then he also had another one in there called Lead the Field by Earl Nightingale. And again, Nightingale became one of the, the owners of Nightingale and Conant. Now, for many of you, you're probably too young to even remember, but Nightingale and Conant was a, a personal development, self-help, 
all the different topics. They published everybody from the audios of Chicken Soup for the Soul, the audios of Jack Canfield, audios of Mark Victor Hansen, audios of Les Brown, Dan. Everybody's been that. That was the where you go to get it. Now, obviously, technology probably disrupted them a bit, like a, a lot of things, which actually leads into some of the stuff we'll talk about today. But it was the first time in my life when I was listening to the audios that I really was able to get a clear picture that, hey, you know what? I didn't realize that if I could set a goal, if I could visualize this, if I could have a dream, I, you know, I live in the greatest country in the world. Now it was been globalized where you could be an entrepreneur in a lot of other countries, but I still believe I live in the best country in the world and I stand by that and the that I could go do whatever I want. Now, during this time, I was a sophomore in college and I was playing volleyball, coaching volleyball, and I was getting my nursing degree. And at the time, it was a perfect timing for me because a lot of my teachers were like, you're not going to be able to play volleyball your whole life. You're not going to be able to coach your whole life. I'll tell you this right now. That was 30 years ago, and I'm still coaching. That's one of my passions. And I just couldn't fathom my life without it. And when I started listening to these uh, audio tapes by Dennis Waitley that talked about if people coming in and I'm not admitting them fast enough. Sorry, guys. If, sorry if you've been waiting there for a few Anyhow, when I started getting drinking the Kool-Aid of, you mean, I can do whatever it is I want based on my ability to set goals. Um, and I got Think and Grow Rich. Started, I started going to the library every single Wednesday. So that's when I would go there and I'd walk out of there with chicken soup for the soul, Think and Grow Rich. And that was when my life was changing, right? It was just transforming right in front of my eyes. And so many of you could probably relate to is once that, once you get a glimpse into that doorway of what's possible, it's very hard to shut it. In fact, I'd say it's impossible to shut it. So I came home, told my parents, I'm not going into nursing, got my degree, but I'm not going into nursing. You got to remember now, this is a family that you were either going to go into the trades or you were lucky enough to go to college. And then my parents sacrificed for so many years and I, to come have me come home and say, I'm going to go be a motivational speaker and go be an entrepreneur. Like that, that's a big shift, right? But that's what I was going to do. And like many, when you try and do things on your own, especially if you're trying to become an entrepreneur, one of the first things you got to realize is you're probably going to be broke for the next three to five years. Because back then, unlike now, back then, we didn't have the internet. I didn't have, I had audio tapes of Dennis Whaley, audio tapes of Jack Canfield, and audio tapes of Tony Robbins. But those weren't really showing you how to start a business online, get it up and running, get make money quickly. And there's never been an easier time in our lifetime for you to be able to start a business, pick a market, get something that the market wants, identify who's either selling stuff in that market, who's either advertising in that market to make it specific to like the newsletter business, or even if you run a media company right now, like any of those, like it, people are looking to get eyeballs left and right. They want to buy leads and they want to buy sales to, the, to get sales. They have to do it because they have an advertising budget, right? And back then, so it really meant I was going to be broke. So I had a bartender, I had a coach. That was what I had to do to grind for all those years. And so it wasn't, I still remember this moment. This is another moment, pivotal moment that came a few years later because I saw, I got the Dan Kennedy newsletter. It was like 99 bucks a month. And there was this audio tape of a dude named Jeff Paul. This goes back way, way long ago. Now, since then, I think Jeff got a suit by the FTC. And I'm chuckling because I just don't know all the details. But But what he said on that, on that audio tape blew my mind. It was just one sentence. You want to hear what it is? The first sentence said, your ability to make money is in direct correlation to your ability to write sales copy. Now, that last part, sales copy, could be turned over to your ability to generate leads, your ability to monetize leads, your ability to speak on camera. It's, it's transitioned. But at that time in my life, it was the perfect thing because it was the thing that was my biggest uh, limiting factor, my biggest critical limiting factor to getting what it is that I want in my life. And when I first heard that, it was actually uh, from a genius. I'm trying to think of like the correlation there, but then th he was also on like a genius network audio tape with Joe Polish, right? This goes back so long ago, guys. But it, for me, what was absolutely game changing about that timeline was it was the first time in my life that I was like, look, I have crystal clarity on exactly the skill set that I have to master in order to be successful at this path that I was taking. And when I, I'm going to break this down here in a second, but 
Let's go back to pen. When you look at time collapsing, the moment you have crystal clarity on the skill set that you have to figure out how to make work in order to get you to the end outcome is actually one of the one of the most powerful components of it. Even better is if you're currently like, I don't know exactly how to become a master at that yet, or I'm not a master or I'm not good at it. But Ed, I can tell you with crystal clarity that if I only learn this, it would open up my whole world to what's possible. Okay. Now, so I want to write this down. Let me, let me see if I can get out of this screen real quick. And then forgive me. I just, I literally just got this vibe board. I'm so excited about it that I can do these kind of trainings and talk to you. So just bear with me a moment. You might be able to see my family here in a second. Let's see where we go. Oh, exit out. All right. What do we got here? Vibe board city. Where's my, oh, there it is. I will split screen. Got it. All right, cool. All right, so when I bear with me a little bit today on this, just be a little patient with me. Brad looks like here today. Very good. Okay, so this is where we want to go. I don't want to use red for that one. So we have our goal all the way up here, right? So here's our goal. And then we have our reason why. And then we have who are we doing it for? Okay. So when I have those elements, I'm like, come on, baby, stay open. When I have those elements of there's my goal, why am I doing it? And who am I doing it for? So those are almost like one, two, three, and four. Does that make sense? And if I'm able to make that work, I got all the motivation I need to make it work. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So now, and these goals could be, obviously, when we do more, when we have time on goal setting, we'll do more of, of those things. But let's just say it's to earn up. You're, you're obviously going to have an income goal. You're going to have, you're going to have income. You're going to have uh, health relationship, network, because I'll get to the big point there. Where What kind of income I want? So this training today is about, about money and about, about getting what you want faster, but it also goes to like, hey, what is what are all, if I'm able to generate half a million dollars in my newsletter business, if I'm able to generate half a million dollars in my coaching business, this is what I do for a living. If I'm able to generate an extra 120,000, 10 grand a month, what does that mean in my life? And then why is this important to me? Usually the why gets so much stronger when it impacts a who, okay? And so when I was single and I was going through that period of my life, my why, I had a lot of whys, right? I had a why to prove people wrong because a lot of people thought I was crazy for trying to become an entrepreneur. And let me see if I can, yeah, I can bring this out. Let's see how that's bigger. That looks good. You guys can see that. And that was one why. why the other why was I wanted to, I didn't want to have the chains of a, a nine to five or seven to four. And I don't have judgment on that. I have opinions on that. I think like right now, if you, if you have the ability of controlling your own destiny and you're, you have the ability to work an extra two hours a day, three hours a day, four hours a day, if this is a side hustle for you, then it's worth doing. I also think there's never been a faster time where you could start a business on a weekend, be live by. We're launching things today in two different businesses that literally I hired a guy in Upwork 90 minutes ago to solve a problem that I had. And for 10 bucks an hour, the guy's going to have it done within three hours and 30 bucks later, guys got it done. This would have taken me days or weeks or whatever. If you back in the day, you'd have to hire a developer. They'd come to your house. They'd want to talk to you. And oh my gosh, if you ever had to talk to a developer, I'm kidding. <laughs> so there's never been that a better time. So my whys were different back then. Now with seven kids, let's see here if I can show you my beautiful crew. This is it. This is that. Let's see if I can pop these guys up for a moment without totally, I'm not going to risk it. But this is my crew right now. I'm getting better. Stick with me, people. It's all right. That, that's my crew right now. And they're going to college. We're doing things. I want them to believe that entrepreneurship is the path. And for doing that, then I got to be, I got to be the leader of that. I want them to see that generational financial freedom is possible for them. I, I want them to see that entrepreneurship is, is the right path, but we can't do that if we're not demonstrating and leading from the pack. So there's a lot of other goals on there that I could share. 
But that is like some of my wants, right? If you want to just have the giving level up more, that's another why, right? And that's another who. So one of the things that, you know, we talked about was when I was, again, investing in yourself. I remember like listening to Jeff talk about the critical limiting factor, right? Is that this is where my present state is. So present situation. Now, a lot of people want to focus on what's wrong in these present situations. But fact of the matter is, is that it doesn't matter how far up the rung of any ladder you get, there's always going to be certain limitations. There's going to be time limitations. There's always going to be money constraints. There's always, go whether it's just too much money, it would be crazy. I have partners, friends, and clients that they're making so much money that they spend so much time figuring out how to invest it so they're not paying as much many taxes. Now, with me, I'm trying to figure out how to be in a place where I could be with seven kids at the same time, right? Those are some of my challenges. And so everybody has challenges at different times. But whatever, so whatever your pre pre present situation is, you're going to have those limitations, right? But then all of a sudden in life, there's this thing that call, comes by that's a vehicle, right? And this vehicle... And we're going to get to the transformation part here in a moment. Something I'm going to show with you guys here in a few minutes is going to blow your mind because it's going to transform how you think about speed. There you go. That might actually be better. Is that better? Oh, this is coming together. I'm learning as we go. Speed, money, power, meaning is that you got to have a vehicle in order to get to the goal. What does that mean? It's really simple stuff, right? So if I have a vehicle, we're going to talk about business models right now. And so the business model that Nate Kennedy talked to many of you guys about on the last training was the, the power of newsletters, okay? And so if that is a vehicle that I want to be successful at, you can actually see how Nate took it from, from working 12 hours a day as a successful agency to how he was able to shrink it down to working just three hours a day with multiple, his goals obviously were multiple uh, newsletters with the goal of seven figures a year, three hours a day, okay? That was his goal, okay? And he didn't know, he had a model, right? Which we'll talk about that in a second. He didn't know it was gonna work for guaranteed purpose like out of the gate. Was he scared? Sure, you're gonna experience all that stuff, right? And so when we get in there, we have now this thing called the critical limiting factor. Thank you, Brian Tracy, for lending me, letting me borrow that, right? And so when we get to the critical limiting factor, a couple of things start popping up. Number one, I don't know how to manage the, I don't know. So you got knowledge, right? Then you have, you have believability in yourself, right? And I've tried things in the past, right? So this is knowledge, okay? Got self-belief, right? Because the one thing that I've always found out, this is so true in health too, right? Is that you can't go on another diet. Well, why can't you go on another diet? Or which I wouldn't use the word diet anyway, but why can't you go on another uh, plan? Because uh, I screwed this up before. How many times you screwed up before? Uh, a lot. <laughs> so what happens is people take like their past failures and they project them into their future, which prevents them from taking positive action to make a better future. And that's like saying, hey, they used to ride horses to drop off the post office or to drop off the mail. Let's go back to doing that. Just because something didn't work for you doesn't mean you have to go backwards and not try again with a new pathway. Now, what would be stupid is if you just keep doing it the same way you've always done, like they, that you guys know the old phrase, like that's insanity, right? So the knowledge, self-belief, and then you're running the same pattern, right? Which is I'm doing the same thing. And then that's what we call insanity. As Tony Robbins likes to say, the first part of interrupting any change is awareness of change. So something needs to happen. Belief that I can change, which we just covered there. Okay, and then a pathway to change and a strong desire to change. Now, if I cover these motivational things, 
So I have desire, which by the way, if we had more time today, I would have gone deeper into who are you doing it for and why are you doing it for? And then make a commitment on that, right? Make a commitment. So what you do there is you come down and you say, look, I'm going to commit. I'm making a commitment today that I'm going to hit this goal in this time frame that I'm committing to, number one, number two. Does that make sense? And so that is how we do this first framework. That's what's supposed to build the belief and the desire. But you still, you're still falling into something that, which is really where the magic of time collapsing comes into place, okay? Is that everybody looks at this pathway, right? And they say to themselves, and here's the problem is, is I, I failed in the past. I don't know if I can do it again. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. But here's the reality about life. One thing that's true about life is that time will continue to move whether you commit to making a change or not. Does that make sense? And so before we could take about, talk about getting results quickly, the first result we have to talk about is, are we willing to actually make a shift in our behavior so that we can get and follow a different vehicle so that we can get an outcome that we currently don't have? Okay. And if the answer is no, then you wouldn't be watching this. So since you've already invested all this time, what I'm hearing is you're already emotionally committed by your behavior. So you should give yourself a pat on the back for that. Behavior is way more important than what you say to yourself or what you think or what you even believe. Your behavior is what you are, right? So even if I feel like I'm crap or even if I feel like I'm a loser, but then I behave in such a way that's a winning, winning possibility, all of a sudden my end result can be better. So do you see the power in what I just shared there? Is that you really don't even have to believe that this vehicle is going to work for you if you're willing to work the system. Because what I found is that, let me see if I can, what I found is, is that, is that once I find a vehicle, let's make this bigger, here's my vehicle, and I start taking intelligent, action based on specialized knowledge. So I'm just going to specialized knowledge. My outputs lead me faster to my goal. This outputs is like a synergetic, center, uh, cybernetic loop, synergistic loop, circular loop that starts to compound on, on itself and actually is the secret to building self-belief. You can never have the clarity that you hope to have by not taking action with specialized knowledge and intelligent action that's going to create outputs, that's going to then have you come right back here and build self-belief. And it breaks that cycle of your pattern right now, right? Breaks, your, breaks, breaks the pattern completely. Because if it starts building up, like I'll give you a quick example, right? How many of you do cold tubs, right? Or cold baths, right? How many of you ever tried doing cold baths, right? You do the five-day challenge. Actually, I will challenge you today that if you want to shock your system in a positive way, if you'd like to feel more empowered in a positive way, go up to the tub after this training, right? And I'm going to keep it simple for you, right? I'm going to say, you're going to fill up the water. You're going to fill up the water, not even that high, right? Just so it gets above your waist, right? And just do cold, no ice in it, nothing like that, okay? And all I want you to do is take do one minute in there. That's not hard. I did four and a half minutes here today, and I'm not really great at this stuff. I have friends that could just dive into the cold ice way better, but it'll shock your system, right? So we're talking about shocking your system. This is an out, these outputs shock your system. These outputs create clarity. These outputs create confidence. These outputs are the secrets to open up the doors to where your current goals are not even close to being what your possible future goals are, right? You're just preparing for what's prepared for you up there. But this is where everyone fails right here, okay? So if you are sitting there and you're like, I wanna do this, I wanna take action, I want, you have to pick somebody to mentor under and you have to pick a model and you have to take strategic intelligent action. So let me break that down for you, okay? So I'm gonna bring this down because this is the secret right here and this is where time collapsing 
starts starts really taking off. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of some of this right here. So I like doing, I like teaching three simple components. And I don't know how this got all goofy. Oh, that's why I did that. All right, how did I do that? I want that and I want that. I just want a simple line. I don't want nothing crazy. Okay, let's go to black. Black's back here. Boom. All right. So there's three things that you need. All right. These three things, these actually, I'd say four things, right? But these three things are the secret to you getting results, period. End of discussion, much faster than you ever thought possible, right? And so I got a couple stories to come along with that. So number one, you have to have a model. Okay, write that down. So you gotta have to you gotta have a model. And so if I said, hey, look, what is the thing that is you want? Okay, it's up there in the up high corner. So this is what I want, right? Now, the old pattern of the non-intelligent slow path to growth, and this is how I talk about it. Watch, right? They're gonna go on YouTube, and this part's not bad. And they're just going to try to watch every free thing that they possibly can about whatever the thing might be. It could be how to rank on YouTube. It could be how to rank or how to get a newsletter that's monetizing, making you money, how to get advertisers. They're going to go do all those things, right? In the, in the coaching business, for example, a, a lot of people say they want to be experts and authorities on things that they've never been authorities on. And then yet they're not willing to invest in their, their ability to get better at that. And they're not willing to invest in their ability to communicate in such a way that allows them to get better. Or if I say, hey, look, you have to do, I'll get to the do thing here in a, a bit, but you got to have a model that's going to lead everything you're doing, right? And so let's say, pretend for a moment, you find the model on YouTube, right? For me and my kids, now everybody would do anything they could for their kids, right? So let's talk about your kids for a moment. If you don't have kids, you could borrow my kids, so hypothetically for this episode. I have kids that are, are volleyball players. I have a son who just qualified or play, uh, placed in state. He's going to play college golf. And the first thing I did when I, when my son came back to me and he did he took his first lesson, right? When he was in eighth grade, took his first lesson. He was a baseball player, a cross player. And he, every single day in our backyard, would start hitting the ball, the, the golf balls against the net. I've never golfed really in my life. I did a couple like that typical, like not really good things. And then I just like playing golf and it just didn't interest me because I was coaching so much volleyball. And I didn't actually get it at the time. I, I get it now. Like I totally get it. Drinking the Kool-Aid big time. So anyhow, the, when Mike demonstrated from his behavior that he was putting all this extra time, true story was one night, it's 10 30 at night, my wife and I are in bed, summer night. And all, it sounds like somebody's in my backyard trying to break into something. And I'm like, what is going on? So I get up, walk outside, and there's my son. He's got his headphones on, and he's hitting golf balls in the net. And that was, that was four and a half years ago. It was pretty awesome, actually, thinking about it. Anyhow, so long story short is, I was like, I said to my wife, Nola, who played collegiate volleyball as well, her and I both did, is I was like, he's never done this. He's never behaved in this way before. But we had two problems, or probably three problems. Like One is he was too committed to too many sports, and we had to handle that. We had to decide which sports he was doing, which ones he wasn't. I could do a whole talk on that story. But number two was, is I was like, the other issue we had was that we didn't have a teacher. But he went to one lesson, fell in love with it, was playing. And as a true story, write this down. I'm forgetting the guy's name who, who did a video on this. But he said, look, if you take somebody who's done something wrong for many years, it's going to take me minimally 7,500 to 10,000 reps to correct it. If you give me somebody who's brand new and I start working with him immediately, but he has no bad habits, it's going to take 1,500 reps to get him to the technique that I need him to get. And now we've all heard the 10,000 reps thing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the difference between going out, doing it wrong, and building out all the wrong behaviors and patterns versus going straight to the coach and getting the exact lessons immediately. Now, it wasn't cheap when we had to do it. Like it was, we had to sit down. We're like, you're already in these two club sports and now we're getting you in with a, a coach. So I remember this, I'm right in the other room. I, my wife and I sat him down, had the conversation and we were like, 
all right, here's the deal. We're going to invest in this, but here's the deal. You need to be invested as well. And so what did we do? We paid the 5,500 bucks, put them in the 10 week program, three days a week with the coach. And then he had homework. He'd go with the coach. Then he had homework. Da, 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 da. And, and boom, clean slate. People ask me all the time, why is his stroke so clean? I'm like, he didn't have time to develop bad habits. Now there were over years, right? There's been moments where he's gone sideways and uh, I have a different story on, on, on the mentor. I'll tell you about in a second. But the first thing you got to ask yourself is, do I have a model to get me the goals that I want to accomplish? And if the answer is no, then you're completely fooling yourself. You're completely fooling yourself if you think you can go do it on your own. I don't care what it is. If you don't have a model that you're following, you're just making stuff up. Making stuff up is going to have you three years down the road, try it. You're going to say, yeah, I tried 20 something different things and I failed at all those things. Now, and I don't have a judgment on that. I'm just like pure facts. Like we all know, like purely if I can follow a model and we do it. Now, one of the questions I love asking is what's faster, 30 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour? And my kids look at me and they're like, dad, 50 miles an hour are, is faster than 30 miles an hour. I said, I don't know. It depends on it. Now, what does it depend on? It depends on where they're driving. Well, what do you mean? If the 30 mile an hour car is on the highway and the 50 mile an hour car is on the country road, that's windy, that has high corn stalks, and the one that's on the highway has the GPS and the one that's in the corn stalks in the road doesn't, which one's going to get there first? This is a silly question. And then you're cheating, aren't you? Maybe, but here's the fact of the matter is, is that the person that's going 30 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, but they have a clear path to getting from where they currently are to where they need to be, they are going to get there a thousand times faster than the person who's on the windy road going as fast as they can every single direction, trying all these different things and trying to get to the outcome that they desire. Facts. Okay, that's number one. Number two, what's number two? Let's go to this one here. Let's go. Number two is we need a mentor. Come on, Ed, I knew you were going to say that, right? Come on, don't you do mentoring? Yeah, I do mentoring. Yeah, I do coaching. I do both of them. But the fact of the matter is, if you want to replicate results that somebody else has had, you've got to find the model, and then you also need a mentor. Why is it different? What is the distinction between the model and the mentor? The model is the plan that I'm following, okay? So I can learn, the, I can look at the model and mimic the model. I can look at the model and get all the steps. I can do all that. But the fact of the matter is that if I don't have a mentor, who am I supposed to call when things go sideways? And raise your hand if you know, everything's going to bound to go sideways at some point, right? I'd rather pay for proximity, pay for wisdom, because those proximities and the wisdom are, are not only going to save me time, because people are so worried about time. Time's floating by you. You're actually buying the time the mentor model have already spent by getting it installed in this, like right up in front. You don't have to go through their 15 years, four years, five years, three years, 20 years, all the lost money that they possibly had when they tested and did things. They were able to, to, to go to, they did it so that now they um, can help you. You're standing on the shoulders of that giant. Now, the other thing that's super important to understand here is that they have the ability of seeing around corners that you don't even know to ask questions about in the beginning. That is why you need a, a mentor as well. You can't just have the model. You got to have the mentor model. The third thing you got to do is you got to have the tribe. Now, here's why I say this, because, because listen to me, the fact of the matter is mentors don't necessarily do what tribe members do, but they might be a little bit of both, right? But if I'm having a hard day and I do not want to work out, simply by getting to the gym and seeing all the people from the class and vibing off them and getting their energy just makes my life 20 times easier. I got a mentor who wrote the program for the day. They might also be the model, but I got a tribe. And that tribe is going to be the people that you rely on when you need the motivational boost, the uh, inspiration. Maybe you're going to borrow some of their mentoring. You're going to borrow some of their wisdom. You're going to get a different look and feel. They're also going to be possibly another model. They may be business partners. They may be teammates. What we talk about, funny story was telling us to my volleyball team that, you know, a friend of mine was the head coach of basketball for Marquette University. 
And I said, coach, how in the world? They just came off a really good year. He's coaching one of the professional teams now. I didn't even know there was a professional league in, in men's basketball. But the uh, coach Wojo is, is his name. And he, I said, how do you, like you were, you coached with coach. Okay. So you've been in the gym with these phenomenal players. So Marquette's never going to be as good athletically than those other people. So how are you going to beat that team? And he just looked at me, he goes, it's really simple. We're going to outculture them. We are going to outculture them. And I was thinking, I was like, that is such a good answer. He didn't blink when he said it, by the way. So you got to figure out what your tribe is doing to help build an internal culture and, and, and a framework. Because if you don't have three, four, five, six guys or gals that you're able to call, when stuff hits the fan, because it's going to hit the fan, everybody. I don't care what business you're in or what you're trying to do or what sport you're in. It's going to hit the fan. In fact, I'd be willing to say that if it's not hitting the fan, you're not trying to grow enough, right? So interesting study is there. They did this study of they looked at and they said, well, why are Japanese students better than Americans at math? And they looked at everything, blah, blah, blah. I'll give you the 30 second version. They came out and they said, like, when they studied American students in class, they only struggled 2% of the time. Think about this for growth, everybody. Think about this one. They only struggled 2% of the time. But the Japanese students were put in situations by the teacher that they struggled over 40% of the time. So the struggle is where the growth happens. This journey is, oh, I just got rid of some of that. That's okay. I don't even know how to go backwards yet. It's probably a little simple button. I can, don't even worry about it, but we're going to go like this. The, this journey here is where you become the person who earns the goal. And you got number one, number two, number three. Okay. Okay. That's that. Okay, cool. Now, in this... I need to teach you a concept, okay? I need to teach you a concept. So let's go through this, right? So here's your goal. This is the mental model. I'm gonna give you three mental models and then we'll wrap up today or I'll see if there's any questions on this training. But what if there was a mental model that allowed you to actually go right to where you wanna be at the top of any industry that would allow you to bypass all the competitors and have this unstoppable confidence because... You knew that you can go into any industry, any net, any market, any business, and you had no competition. And you did it even if you have no experience in that, right? Sounds, sounds too good to be true, isn't it? Let me share exactly how that is. When I went into dentistry years ago, I had a business that we went into this business. Our business was called Dentist Profits, right? And so I went into that market because dentists have money, right? And I wanted to build a coaching club. Now, let me just tell you this. The only experience I had at that time of building a coaching club was that I was able to actually, I, I studied and learned sales copy and learned copywriting and learned a little bit of selling remotely with leverage with my mental toughness business. And we're talking about going back to when I was 23. I'm 48 right now. So this is a long time ago. I might look younger than I did back then, but my hair's a little thinner. <laughs> that might, 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 but I can change that too. But anyhow, so I had to go into this market. I didn't know anything about this market, okay? Dentistry, didn't know anything about it. Everyone thought I was crazy again. So this is the second, maybe the third time I was told I was crazy. And that meant I was probably onto something, right? First thing I did, I went out and what did I do, everybody? What could you guess I did? I found my model to follow, the mentor, and I licensed IP. So that's how I did it. I licensed it. So I borrowed other people's wisdom, okay? So we can even put that like OPW, right? OP, OPA, actually, other people's assets. This is other people's wisdom. And then this is other people's experience, right? So there was someone I saw in a different market that was absolutely crushing it. And I was like, man, if I had a business just like him, I'd never have to worry about money ever again in my life. Now that second part is not always true, by the way, but that was, that's my framework. That was like, that was time collapsing before I even knew what time collapsing was. Model mentor, licensed IP. And then I, I decided that I wasn't going to do it the slow way. And the reason I wasn't going to do it the slow way is because I was broke. 
I, I, I spent my last dollars here and I had enough money to run an ad or two. And so what it looked like was I had 1800 bucks to an ad. We ran the ad, it made something like 4,800 bucks, right? Maybe even a little more. And I'll tell you this, I thought I was rich and I was happy as heck. I was super stoked. I was like, this is going to change everything for me. Because I knew I was onto something. And by the way, when you start something and you get that first sale, I was telling my daughter, Grace, this day or night, I was like, look, do you know what I know the most exciting sale in any business is? And she's, because she's testing out some stuff right now with her cousin, Kathleen, who does an amazing job with influencer stuff on Amazon. And I said, it's the first sale. I go, because when you get the first sale, then you start believing that the second sale is possible and the third sale is possible. And then it's a math game. It's my buddy, Nate Kennedy, who's running his million dollar newsletter business. It's, what do you think is going to be the most exciting part? Is it going to be the first lead you generate or is it going to be the first person who rents your list? Definitely going to be the first person who rents your list, right? Because if you can get somebody to rent your list, now it's just a math game. How many subscribers can you put on your list? Keep getting them that are active and engaged that actually are willing to engage with your newsletter and then advertisers are willing to spend. Like that becomes then the critical limiting factor, right? And if I know my critical limiting factor, then I just got to use the vehicle and work the process. And then I go to my three things, model, mentor, tribe, and then work the system, right? So anyhow, I went in that market. Now I use the principle here that is it could change your life. And I'll tell you where I learned it from, right? So I went in there, we scaled this up, by the way, we scaled this up to a heck of a lot of, I think our best year in dentistry was $7 million. I sold a division of that company, not for nearly what I thought I was going to sell for. So if you want to know anything about how to sell businesses wrong, I figured it all out the wrong way, which was while I was selling my business. <laughs> but anyhow, here's the big thing that I want you to understand. Everybody, here's the goal. And the big goal was I wanted to have the most successful coaching club business, right? And so what everyone does is they think you got to get your first five clients, then 10, then 20, then 30, then, and then one day you're going to reach this goal. There's some truth to that, but there's this great book written in 1978 called Winning Through Intimidation by a guy by the name of Robert Ringer. Now, what was so cool about Robert Ringer, he spoke at one of my events years ago, anyhow. So Robert actually was an uh, amazing guy. He's a better writer than he was a speaker. I'll tell you that much. Which, by the way, if you're going to hire somebody, make sure you see a video of them before they come to your event and speak. Everybody loved him, though. He's a great guy. But what he taught is this concept called the power of the leapfrog theory, right? And this is something that everybody gets wrong when they're ever trying to accomplish any goal. They do the same thing. And they do what's called sequential thinking and, and sequential goal achievement. And that's accurate when you're doing like a focus exercise and you have your sequences, right? I, I get that. That's one thing. But what I'm talking about is something different. Sequential thinking is that you went to kindergarten, you went to first grade, you went to second grade, you went to third grade, you went to fourth grade. And what does it go on? You could follow the whole trail all the way up, right? It goes fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, 10th grade, 11, 12, right? We graduate up those ladders. And that is just a sequential way of thinking. That's how it's always with how we've been indoctrinated to think, right? But the problem is in business and in life, like in business, even like in sports, I have a few other analogies there I can talk about coaching, but I'll do that on a different video, a different time. But one thing you gotta realize is that all the competitors, everybody, like this is where it's crowded, guys. This is where it gets a little less crowded up here. But at the top, in every single industry that I've ever been in, this is where the least amount of competition is. At the highest parts of the ladder. And so mentally, a thicker, mentally, we want to get our mindset right and we do a Robert Ringer calls the leapfrog theory of success. It's called leapfrog theory of success. I'm gonna get better in my markers here, guys. Sorry about that. I think this might be it. What about this? That's thicker. Yeah, it's much thicker. Sorry about that. Anyhow, leapfrog theory of success. The leapfrog theory of success days. Hey, look, no one 
you you have no moral obligation to to work your way through the ranks. This is a no go. You have no more obligation to work your way through the ranks at any given point, at any given time. You can decide and declare to jump straight to the top, right? Go right to the top and be in the top of the space. Every successful person I've ever been around, they just naturally either figured this out at some point or that's what they do. And sometimes, as we talked about earlier, it comes down from the belief, comes all the way up to here. And you got to borrow belief. That's why you got to have a mentor and a model. You're borrowing belief from them. You got to have your tribe. So when everything hits the fan, you have people around you. And then you have to, you absolutely have to, you absolutely have to have a model that you're following. Otherwise you're making it up. Okay. There's, there, if I said, I, uh, the dog ate my homework right? The dog ate my homework. But if I said the homework ate the dog, it doesn't make any sense. It's the same content, different structure. Without a model, without the plan, you're never going to be able to have the outcome that you truly deserve. And if you really have people that you're, you really want to do it for, you got to do it the right way. Okay. So I have a few moments. I see we have a couple of people on the training if you have a question, you could either unmute yourself. I'm happy to answer a question. Otherwise, I'm going to share. <clears throat> I'm going to share a little bonus training that I'm going to give away as a free gift for anybody who decides to uh, move forward with Nate's event um, or challenge coming up really quickly. Okay, so I ran an event. I ran an event, so I'm going to open up to questions in just a moment for any questions. I ran an event that right here where I had Jesse Itzler, I had Roland Frazier, I had my buddy Vinny Fisher, Jeff Usner, and then I had just, so, I went so deep into the art of time collapsing, okay? People paid anywhere between 3000 to 5000 to be in the room for that. It's pretty incredible. And if you decide that you'd like to jump in and be a part of Nate's challenge. So if you go to natekennedy.com forward slash challenge, I'll go ahead and gift you this entire training. Okay, it's two days. Two days, a lot of great people were there. Uh, like I said, some people paid uh, 3,000, some paid, people paid 5,000 to be in the room. And that'll be my gift to incentivize you to take the next steps if this is what you really want to do, okay? If this is what you want to do. And it's okay if you don't, it's okay if you don't, but here's the one thing I just really want to encourage you. If you're saying you want to do the business, but you're not willing to do this process and this process, and you're not willing to leap to the top, you got to rearrange your thought process. Okay. Because what I've found too, is as people get older, their ability to make good decisions actually becomes weaker. Okay. And the reason that I, this is a little bit of subjective, but what I've figured out is so many of them are spending too much time trying things haphazardly rather than being all in on things, okay? And now, again, it doesn't make you a bad person, right? It just makes you a bad executor of a proven process. And when you're executing on a whim here and there, the outcome is you end up failing more than you're supposed to, okay? Does failure lead to success? Yeah, and unless, of course, you keep, unless, of course, you keep doing what you did before, which is insanity, and that does not lead to success. That actually leads to more lack of self-belief. And look, at the end of the day, if you have a model, a mentor, and you have a tribe, and you have proven you're taking other people's assets and you're implementing them, it's the fastest way to do things now. Now, we didn't talk about other people's audiences. We didn't talk about other people's databases and different ways to do swaps and to grow your business. But actually, I'm going to talk about one thing for a second. I'm going to just make sure. Excuse me one second. I got to make sure I don't lose my uh, power here. Thanks for being patient with me today, guys. 
Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. You're going to check out this. Within a week, you're going to come back to Ed's studio on one of my live feeds or something like that, or one of the next trainings. I'm going to challenge you to see it. This will be better. I'll have this locked in. My 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 snooze alarm on my computer over here, just I haven't been able to fix it. And I don't know why. I'll fix it after this, this thing today. All right, let's cover another thing here, okay? Has this been worth it for you? Even if you didn't make it and you're watching the recording, just say yes out loud. I, I'm a big believer in people. Like, I believe, I've seen people, I was telling a lady last night, I'm like, I really believe that like humans have a, a an unlimited capacity to handle and endure. And we get to ask questions all the time. My wife and I, we had a daughter who was sick for about three years. And then we still have six other kids and we're doing the best we can. And one of the questions we get a lot is how do you guys do it all? And I think that's one of those questions where I think it's one of those questions that people ask, but the reality is that there's nothing that we have that you don't already have. And God willing, through his grace and mercy, we've been gifted our abilities to have these blessings, okay? But I also think, I just want to share this with you on top of that, and I want to share with you that there's nothing that you can't accomplish and that you don't have the capacity to solve. And there's nothing that you don't have the capacity to endure with, okay? Sometimes the capacity is built up through the struggle. And even if it's good struggle, there's good struggle, like in practice, when we're training stress, I'm purposely trying to create stress so that they grow faster, they learn faster. Because if you take somebody who's never learned anything uh, or never been in, in an environment where there's stress and there's chaos and there's frustration and overwhelm in a competitive environment when you're coaching, and then you all of a sudden throw them into a match, they're going to fail. Nothing that you teach them is going to transfer over because you've only trained in a emotional state that is not transferable over to the team. And so that's why when you follow like your mentors and your models, you can follow them at a faster clip because you're borrowing their belief system, but you're also borrowing their emotional tenacity with when things go sideways. Oh, I'm going to say that again. You're borrowing their belief systems that the system's going to work, but you're also borrowing their emotional tenacity and endurance to handle some of the chaos that on your own would be overwhelming and destructive and paralyzing as an entrepreneur. But with a, a mentor or model, it's freeing because you're going straight to them, right? I was watching an interesting AI chat GPT training and the guy, Adam, did a great job. As he said, anytime you don't know the, the, the answer to the question, just ask God. Ask uh, AI what the answer is. <laughs> and he's, I was like, wow, it's like a mentor. Like you just go and be like, hey, what, what am I supposed to do in this situation? And the mentor has already been there, okay? And a lot of times the mentor is the model, but some models are not good mentors, okay? So we're aware of that. We find that in coaching, right? I promised one thing, which was, would you like to know how to double your income in half the amount of time, okay? Now, so years ago, I went to a Perry Marshall seminar where he brought in a guy called Richard Koch. Now, Richard Koch was the author of the first 80-20 rule book. And then Perry Marshall was the author of the book of 80-20 for marketing and advertising. Phenomenal book, both great guys, both amazing. But if you spend a little bit of time thinking about this concept is like it, the whole idea of Pareto, right? Pareto principle is very simple, right? It's that 80% of all your results, and I spelled that backwards, bear with me, is always directly correlated to 20% of your inputs. And what that really means for you and I is 20% of the actions that we're actually taking. And if you, if you, you got to go get the book, 80-20. You can get them both. I recommend both, Guy Perry and by Richard Koch. They're, they're both different, but Richard Koch has a more global way of looking at 80-20, the creative principle across many different things. And, and Perry Marshall has a very direct correlated way of looking at it for, for businesses, okay? And so what I really appreciate about that is... Uh, when you start looking at all the different areas of your life and you start looking at the results that you're having, 80% of the revenue that you're generating is going to come from 20% of the customers and 20% of the leads. And then your top 20% of those customers are going to generate probably four times the amount of money than your than your your other customers. And it just goes on and on. Now, the struggle that I've always faced, totally on me, is that 
the inputs, the outputs, is that I get caught up in this 80% of activities that produce 20% of the result. Now, here's what's crazy about this. I would be willing to bet that if you and I, if you did a day of consulting or came to a workshop, we just did this kind of concepts, right? I'd be willing to bet that every headache, every crappy client, everything that's limiting you, everything that you'd like to avoid, everything that you'd like to get rid of is found, you gotta use red for that, is found within this ecosystem. It just is. A really good example. I'm going to tell you a story here. This is probably the last story of the day and then I got to get going. But I had a client comes to me and goes, hey, look, he does, he does, his name's Jeff Hampton. Awesome guy. Jeff's great. You can see I did an interview on the show with him and he did a, he did a uh, interview with me, but he runs a, a law firm because he's a lawyer for short-term rental investors and other investors as well, high income professionals. And he's an asset protection attorney who what do you call it? He makes sure that people don't lose everything because somebody gets hurt at their rental home and then they get sued. And what he's found is that by being a short-term rental, luxury short-term rental owner himself, he joined what? He joined masterminds. He got in a coaching club. He got mentors. He got models. And what do you think happened? Guess what happened? He started learning a lot, right? What also happened was he was in a room with a bunch of other people, his tribe, his tribe group. Sorry guys, one second. My lovely daughter's in the front door. One second. Anyhow, his, he did exactly what I talked about, right? Is But he's in a new tribe, right? And what did he figure out in the new tribe? He goes, he figured out that nobody knew what they were talking about when it came to asset protection. Because So they went to, hey, Jeff, how are you protecting all your assets? And they, these are smart people, by the way. These aren't dumb people. These are really, these are successful investors, high income earners. This isn't one of those things where he's talking to people that are, brand newbies and stuff. And so anyhow, so Jeff found that out and he's, oh my gosh. So what he did is he started, and I keep dropping the pen. He figured out that he's, look, man, none of these guys know what they're talking about. Not in a negative way. They just need help. So he built out a whole business in the short-term rental space, right? So Jeff comes to my house. All right, Jeff, here's Jeff, right? Let's see, we should get a video of Jeff. Jeff's a good guy, man. Jeff Hanton. He comes to my house, right? And we're sitting there and we're doing, we do an interview. We do a day of consulting. And I break every client I ever worked with. I'm always like, who are your best clients? Who are we talking to? We want to know who are we talking to? So number first, one, number one thing that we ever do with like my offer wingman program, offer wingman service, any business you ever go into, I always build it from your best client first all the way down right? It's a leapfrog theory concept, but the fact of the matter is the reason you do that is because the best clients are going to pay for the rest of your growth of your business. Okay. Write that down. Your best clients, just like if you do the million dollar newsletter business, your best advertisers are going to be the first people you go after, not the last, because they're going to be the ones who end up funding the rest of your business. Does that make sense? And then same thing here. If you're selling high ticket coaching, if you're selling high ticket uh, dental implants. We help doctors all the time with their high-end services. You don't start at the bottom. You go right to the people with the money that can afford that. Does that make sense? And so what we've always found is those people are the most enjoyable people. What Jeff and I spoke about was um, some of his most enjoyable people are people that already have three to five rental units. They're committed to growing their portfolio. Now, why would that be? Because people that are committed to growing their portfolio they're not just testing out with a one rental, like a small rental, so that when Jeff proposes like his asset protection protection package, he wants to be dealing with people that got hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of property to cover. And even better is if they're a doctor who have other assets that are very valuable that they really got to make sure they don't lose, okay? Because of one slip and fall. He's got amazing stories. You should also check out his YouTube channel called, just check out Jeff Hampton if any of that interests you. Please let him know I, I sent you, right? Anyhow, but one of the hardest things for him to digest was he had built a business that was intaking inputs, activities. You sometimes build up this success that has 80% of your activities but they're only getting 20% of your profit or your income or your results. 
yet you've committed to these 80% of activities. And it, it will wrap this up with a Brian Tracy question, which is, if you were starting today, knowing what you know now, and you had no limitations, no money limitations, no geographical, there's no limitations, what would you do differently? And I, I'll tell you, going after the top 20% to get the to get all the 80% is a thousand times more enjoyable than adding the extra 80% to add in a little bit of extra 20%, right? And so one of the things that we're working through right now, even with, if you look at like Monday through Friday and you look at the three hour day, which I have not mastered yet. I know Nate plans on talking about it in his training, but I haven't mastered it yet, right? But it's what would need to happen in your life for you to be able to take your most important things that you accomplish for your clients, your customers, and uh, patients to allow you and your team to allow you to literally work just a three-hour day. Like what would have to happen in that window? And if you said, look, I'm going to take one week experiment and I'm only working three hours a day. How planned, I guess I'll give you a little extra time, maybe like 20 minutes, 30 minutes to plan, okay? So your three hours is a sprint where I got to condense all this quality stuff in just three hours. Now, one of the dentists that I worked with ran a really successful, runs a really successful coaching club. And one of his clients was talking about how they would have a goal every day by, by noon, every day, they were already at $12,000 a day in production. That's going to be a very successful dental practice. Even if they don't hit the $12,000 every single day, that focus is going to get them so further, so much further ahead than by not having that focus. Anyhow, it's been great having you here today. So if you like this, obviously subscribe at our YouTube channel at O'Keefe Show.